there is a very slight risk of being diagnosed with MS if you have a first degree relative, probably less than 5%. Perhaps the risk is greater by virtue of the fact that we live in the upper Midwest because there is an increase in risk of MS in individuals who live further from the equator, and that's true in both the north and the southern hemispheres. So that's probably a greater risk factor than having a first degree relative. We know that our African American population and our Latino population have more aggressive disease. We are actively seeking patients in those categories to actively get involved with diagnosis and treatment so that we can prevent progression. There's a lot of genetic work that's looking at that and probably related to actually the kind of combinations of genetic groups that will predispose to more aggressive disease. That in combination with environmental factors probably is the ultimate reason our patients are having more aggressive disease. Well, I've mentioned a little bit about living up in the upper Midwest and the risk as you go further from the equator. We think some of that, at least, has to do with vitamin D deficiency. And there's plenty of data that suggests that vitamin D deficiency is associated with increased risk of MS, increased risk of MS attacks, and so on. So that's certainly one environmental factor um, that can actually be treated. There are other environmental factors that have been looked at. A variety of viruses have been looked at as a potential cause for MS. Um, we also know that people who smoke actually have increased risk of attacks and actually it negates the effect of their MS modifying therapies. So that's very welcome data. Uh, we are very happy to tell our patients they shouldn't be smoking because it's really not good for their health and for their MS. We also know that the time after pregnancy is a very high risk time for attacks in our patients who are diagnosed with MS. Pregnancy itself is a protected time. Patients typically have a decreased risk of attacks during pregnancy. It's the time afterwards, it's the six to nine months afterwards where our patients are at higher risk of attacks. The reasons for that are probably ultimately aimed at preservation of a pregnancy so that there is actually a change, an immunological change that occurs during pregnancy that allows protection and so a safe pregnancy. Postpartum, however, things revert back to their conditions that existed prior to pregnancy. One way you can kind of gauge how patients will do is to look at their MS attack rate in the year preceding the pregnancy and that can give you a general idea of how a patient will do postpartum with regard to their attacks. It's an interesting question. We know that there are hormonal associations with MS. We know that women are predominantly affected with MS more than men. We know that pregnancy is a protected time, but there isn't a lot of data looking at what happens to women with MS who are living longer and approaching their menopause. There is some data that tells us that women have more attacks in that time around their menopause, and we're actively looking at that now 